the number one mistake people make is marketing before their brand is built or doing their podcast before their brand is built. Because your brand has to answer five important questions. Who do you serve? How do you serve them? What qualifies you to serve them? How does it make their life better? And what makes you different than everybody else in your space? Most hosts never achieve the results they hoped for. They're falling short on listenership and monetization, meaning their message isn't being heard and their show ends up costing them money. This podcast was created to help you grow your listenership and make money while you're at it. Get ready to take notes. Here's your host, Adam Adams. Hey, what's up, podcaster? Welcome back to the podcast on podcasting, where we help you become the best version of your podcast self so that you can interview better people, so that you can get more listeners, so you can make more money in your journey for podcasting. And today, we are actually have a couple of people that have become friends and also clients. And then we also were on stage together at a podcast conference. Just some re- remarkable people that really know how to brand. Their podcast is called Be Bold Branding. Their company is called Brand Face. We've got Tanya Eberhardt as well as Michael Carr on the show. And we're going to find out what they've done, how they've done it, and how they've gotten to the success that they have. And since they're superpower is about branding. I'm going to ask him some really good advice on branding. So get your pens out, get ready to take some notes. I think you're going to learn something today and get motivated and inspired. So first and foremost, hey, my friends, welcome to the show. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for having us, Adam. Thanks, glad Adam. To be here. Very happy to be here. I want to start here. Why did you even have start a podcast? There are people that decide not to have a podcast. They're like, oh, I would never do that. I could never do that. So I don't know where you were and if anything held you back, but why did you ultimately decide that you needed to have a podcast? And why don't I have both of you answer that separately? Ladies first. Go ahead, Tanya. You got it. Okay. So when we first started the podcast, it was called Fearless Friday. And that's because one of the things we noticed throughout our personal branding journey, working with people all over the world, is that there's still a lot of apprehension out there about putting your brand out there. People have some fright when it comes to that. (laughs) So we wanted to do some unique things to show them how to get their brand out there, to prove to them that it was easy, that it really worked well, and also to mix in a few fun things. We even went hang gliding on one of our Fearless Fridays. (laughs) That's really cool. I've never hang glided. I have bungee jumped, which was effing scary. I will tell you. I I I knew I was attached. I knew I was attached to that thing. And I was thinking to myself, this person in front of me just jumped. They're fine. But to like actually take the leap was counterintuitive. It was opposite that my physical body wanted to do. Yep. So crazy. Hang gliding. That sounds super fun. I need to try that. What was that like? Oh, it was a blast. I uh, loved yeah, it. Yeah, we loved it. Like they it, pulled us so, up on this thing called the, a dragon, the, a dragon. A dragon fly. That's what he called it, a dragon okay. fly. And he drug us to like, I think they took us to like 4,000 feet. And oh, then geez. Just, and then he just pulls a lever and cuts you loose. And we Wait, just, is this like a tandem thing? Is this like, do you have a guide, yeah. somebody who can pilot that while you're on? Or did we, you just go to 4,000 by yourselves? No, no, no. It was a tandem. Yeah. Okay. So we had a pilot and we were above. You and, were How many people? Was it your pilot and you two on one of these? Each. So the pilot and Tanya, and then the second time it was the pilot and me. Speaking of Fearless Friday and getting over fears and putting yourself out there, which was your old podcast name, right? Right. What was that like? Were you afraid to get on on that thing and go to 4,000 feet? No. No, no, we're pretty fearless. Yeah, we, 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 we've done <laughs> all of cool. that. I've jumped out of airplanes, parachuted. I've done uh, the bungee jump several times. When I did the bungee jump the first time, it was in Panama City where it literally was attached to a crane. I like did the same one. Oh. I bet I like did they the didn't same have one. no safety. I mean, they just had no a net thing. under it either. <laughs> we're oh, like yeah. bailing off of this thing. Jeez. And my si- my little sister went first. So I was like, well, I mean, I got to go now. <laughs> For sure. So you were saying, Tanya, that your why was to help people, to help them get over their fear, because you knew that a lot of people in business are kind of like afraid 
to put themselves out there, to market themselves, to to ask for the sale. And so you thought, hey, let's just have a podcast that supports them. Is there any other why behind that? Did you want your company to grow? Did you want more clients? Did you want any other whys? Yes. Mm -hmm. Credibility and authority. And it's kind of like when we wrote our first brand Facebook, and we've done several of them, but the first one, I went into it with eyes wide open. And I realized that, okay, I'm not going to sell a million copies of this book, right? I'm not Danielle Steele. And I, yeah, I really wanted it to be something that would lend credibility to me as an entrepreneur in this personal branding space. And I can tell you that without question, it has done exactly that. It helped me get some speaking engagements, a lot of clients, anything like that. Now, a podcast... Actually, I wanted to do the exact same thing. It was just the modern version of a book, really, except a podcast is perpetual. It's ongoing, and you can bring new th and exciting things to it every week. And so for that reason, I really wanted this to work for us. And we flipped from Fearless Friday to Be Bold Branding just really about two and a half years ago mm -hmm. when we realized, okay, Fearless Friday is cool, but we really weren't super dialed in to what we do and really making that connection. So that's when we changed it and changed the format a little bit too. We still address a lot of the fear that people go through, but the format's changed. Was it hard to rebrand your podcast when it was called one thing and you might even be attached to the name? You might even be afraid that your listener is going to feel let down because it changes on them when they, wait, they started. Like, What was it like, pros and cons, rebranding a podcast? I think for us, it wasn't a big deal because when we started Fearless Friday, we didn't have a clue what we were doing. Like it was, <laughs> it, I remember sitting and having, I was in a, at a conference I was going to speak at in Greenville, South Carolina, and Tanya was back at the office. I think it was in Ohio at the time. And so we were talking about, we literally were going to use Fearless Friday as part of a sales funnel, uh, the original thought process. So our sales team ran across a no, or I'm not ready. Then we could invite people to come, you know, and nurture that client along with this Fearless Friday thing. But we saw the limitations of it and we didn't feel like it really reached the broader audience that we wanted. So we didn't have an all attraction. So to answer your question, rebranding wasn't a huge deal. Plus, and we didn't have that many listeners. Yeah, we did. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. What so steps wasn't did like you we have to all do? Three though. of them were very disappointed we changed our name. <laughs> <laughs> three of them were very disappointed. <laughs> what steps did you have to do to rebrand? I'm thinking about intros, outros, music, artwork, just to name a few. When you were rebranding, how did you go about it? Well, we started defining, first of all, we had a pretty good idea beforehand of who is that ideal prospect for us, you know, that ideal avatar. So we kind of knew who we were talking to. Now we needed to just reframe it with the topics that we were going to be talking about. In other words, we dug into not just the fear factor of it anymore, but it was, okay, what do you need to know as a person, as a business owner or entrepreneur to build the most effective and powerful personal brand that you can. So we started generating a lot of those topics. And then we started taking a look at some of the guests we wanted to have on that could also bring some enlightenment to the show as well. So we do now a combination of having guests on that are very bold personal brands. And then of course, giving them tips and advice so people can build their own bold personal brand in our solo episodes. So for us, it was a matter of all those things. You know, We had to do the artwork all over again. But I think the hardest part was just coming up with all the topics and the right kind of guests because a lot of the content was the same. We were teaching throughout that time frame as well. And your podcast is a lot of teaching that we do and a lot of coaching and nurturing. And so that didn't really change a lot. We just changes the way we presented it. Okay. Got it. And then, of course, artwork, things like that. That's what we do. So our staff yeah, was able true. to pretty quickly turn that around and drew up the storyboards and we figured it out and everybody put their two cents in. We figured out the look that we wanted and yeah. just ran wide open after that. So Yeah. We even have a soundtrack a soundtrack that was actually produced by us or for us by Wendell Cox, who is the lead guitarist for Travis Tritt. And so 
Wendell has been a family friend forever. Met him years and years ago. And now he's a really good friend of mine and Michael's. He and another person actually produced a signature exclusive soundtrack for us that we use in a lot of our Be Well Branding episodes today. Awesome. I'm a fan of having what's original theme music. Music that it's like with branding, there's your story, as you were already talking about your storyboard. With branding, there are your colors, there are the fonts that you use, there's your logo and artwork, and there's also audio brand, your mm -hmm. voice, your message, and the music. And I think that it should be unique. Most podcasters either plagiarize and steal music that they just like off of line, or they just go only one step further and then they buy rights to some inexpensive music that 97 other podcasters have. And so I love the fact that you went and had this friend, this family friend do original music so that your audio brand could be on point and other, nobody else has that. It's the Taco Bell's gong. Ding. Yeah. And you know, it's Taco Bell. Exactly. You, you hear 10 other people using that audio brand of Taco Bell, and now it loses all of its credibility. It loses its uniqueness. It's right. no longer an audio brand. It's just a random sound that you hear all the time. If somebody's listening and they're taking from this, man, maybe I shouldn't get that free music or that cheap music from this place. How would they go about getting original theme music the way you guys have? You could go to Fiverr. That's one source. So there are some musicians on there that do jingles. You can Google jingle companies. They mm -hmm. do that for a living, of course. So we just happen to be in a very fortunate spot that we had access to one of the greatest musicians ever, right? But that's where I'd start for sure. And you can Google sonic branding because you know audio branding is also known as sonic branding in mm -hmm. the marketing world. And you can Google that, hopefully get some good results off that too. But it's one of the coolest things we've done. And it actually, Michael is responsible for the sound of that because he really thought about it, thought we thought about the feeling we wanted to have when people heard it, what we would feel like walking on stage as our introduction bumper music was playing, those kind of things. So just kind of put yourself in those shoes and put yourself on that rock and roll stage, right? And we thought about all of those things. Yeah. We visualized it. Walking into the room, the music's playing, we're waving, crowds <laughs> on their feet, cheering. All three people, right? All three. Uh, <laughs> all three. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so the, I, I, I'm much. getting a ton of value already. And we're really just it though. Why did you have a podcast? And we've gotten a lot so far. I'm curious what you've learned along the way. Why don't you let us know how many months or years have you been doing podcasting? And along that way, what have you learned? Okay. From Fearless Friday, it had to be three years. We've three been years, three, almost four. Yeah, almost, almost four. four years mm -hmm. we've been doing podcasting. And then as Bebo Branding, I would say it's been two and a half years. Right. And we went about a year and a half before we switched over. And we hacked at it a little while. But one thing that we knew was the consistency of cutting podcasts. That was, we knew that that was very important because that's very important in branding. And so we just figured that just made sense. The rest of it, we sort of just hacked at until we could figure it out. And then we talked to as many podcasters as we could. We joined groups like uh, Podmatch, our friend Alex Sanfilippo, through which we met you, of course. And, and then um, we really realized how. Then we really realized we didn't how much know, improvement yeah, we needed. That we really did. <laughs> we knew just enough to know we needed to do a podcast on a consistent basis. I would leave our knowledge there until we began to talk to other podcasters, and then and you the plug that you deserve. We knew when we met you that you knew what you were doing, and we are big believers in paying people that know what they're doing for what they do. So we don't have yeah. to continue to hack against the, you know, just beating our head against the brick wall until we finally figure it out. Time is money and money's time. And we realize that. So 
We learned the bulk of production and things. Tanya was in the radio business for years and years, and that's where she oh, learned yeah. her I forgot that. I forgot about that. So she knew a lot about video and sound quality and things. And you I, were like in music, I, weren't you? Mm. No, I was really just on the sales, sales. side no, of things. No, but I, I mean, worked. Michael. Oh, Michael. Not music. I've uh, been a professional auctioneer for 30 oh, years. Oh, that's right. Because yeah. I knew you had these like really nice microphones. And okay, it was auctioneering. Got it. Yeah. Cool. That is something, though. That's a great point. Because even though I did have like these scene houses, expensive shures, and you know, I've carried several microphones over the years, EVs, and I've got one of all of them. We were not actually using that. We were using a Raspberry when we met you. Mm-hmm. A blue raspberry. A blue raspberry, which is actually the smaller version of the Yeti. And it was mm-hmm. a good microphone, but it was not the quality. And you brought that to us and you're like, hey, look, that picks up so much ambient noise. It picks up the air condition. You know, you need to get these you know, that we have now. Yeah, these, what they call them, <laughs> omnidirectionals now and um, our unidirectionals. And oddly enough, these are the ones I'd used as an auctioneer. And I remember when we were on a meeting with you and I said, wait just a minute, how about this? And I ran out to my car and got my scene houser I work out with all the time. And you know, I remember we were breaking down the different microphones. So that was something that even though I was in the industry, like I knew to have these good microphones for the work that I did as an auctioneer, it never dawned on me to put it to work as in the podcast arena. Like we should have. Love it. Love it. So you mentioned something at the beginning of that question, what you learned along the way. And one of the things you said, you always knew that I'm trying to quote you, the importance of consistency and cutting, I think it was. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Because naively, I don't know what that means. Consistency in cutting. Does it mean cutting down every episode or? No, the consistency of having them. Yeah, we knew. Oh, of like recording them and publishing them. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Actually doing it every week, no matter what, whether you felt like it, you didn't feel like it, whether you felt like nobody was listening, whether you felt responsible because everybody was listening. Like we (laughs) knew in branding, consistency is so vital to the growth of a business. And we know that, right? And then habitual consistency is the way you grow organizations. And those things were we've known for years and years and years. And so we knew when we started our podcast, we were going to have to commit to recording it very consistently. We could not just record three or four and then wait two more months, record three or four more. Like we needed to be out there every day, all the time on those consistent dates. That part we knew. And into the- I'm probably responsible for the work cutting because it comes from my old radio days. Have you cut that commercial yet? Are you cutting commercials today? Right. <laughs> so that's where that term comes Spot from. That might tag. be a little confusing. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking it meant like editing out the ums On and the uhs. cutting floor, right? <laughs> well, and, well that, that fits too, honestly. It yeah, it does fit to the production part of that. Got it. Is, um, yeah. Cool. But I meant more just uh, making sure that we recorded at the same time ever we made, we set the date and we recorded it and we have religiously stuck to it. There's been very few times that we have not shot our Bebo branding. I like that a lot. And so sound quality was one of the things that in the beginning you wanted sound quality. It's just that you were sharing a condenser microphone. And so it was just a little bit echoey. You weren't maybe always exactly the same distance from the microphone. Mm -hmm. Maybe one of you was two inches off or something. But then you switch to a couple of dynamic mics. So even though you might record together in the same room, you went ahead and got two separate mics, one in front of one of your mouths and the other one in front of the other mouth. What do you think of that change? We hear that it sounds much better. (laughs) We We hear it ourselves, but we have gotten some uh, compliments from our own staff. They'll say, oh my gosh, that sounds so much better. Oh, good. Um, So yeah, that's definitely one of the things. And I have to say in the beginning of our podcast too, we did a terrible job with with background. (laughs) Terrible. Like when you see us here today, you know, in the video version of this, we have our brand face logo behind us. We have certain brand colors. We're wearing brand colors. 
stores. We have the orange vases in the back. So there's a lot of like brand kind of mixed into everything. In the early days, Michael was traveling so much and I would be in my Ohio office and he would be in his car for uh, some of those podcast episodes. So needless yeah. to say, we've taken all of those old ones down. With, <laughs> you can't uh, even find them anymore <laughs> because they're so embarrassing. Back so, <laughs> then, I would take a beach towel sometimes and put it in the windows of the car. Oh, nice. Just because the sun was oh. too bright in it. And uh, I'd have to find a play. I couldn't do it going down the road, obviously. So I'd have to find a play. It was They were terrible. It was horrific. But looking yeah. back, we're <laughs> proud of the fact that we just trudged on ahead, right? The topics, the content, they were really, really good. But if you were trying to watch it, it was painful. Yeah, it was rough. <laughs> And the audio, of course, was bad, too. So, But hopefully for your listeners, you know, it's an example of do it anyway, because all of the gurus say that, right? Do it anyway. But um, now we know be better. It until you are it, right? And we were being it. We were doing a podcast. We were doing it very consistent. It's just we had not yet thought of anything like Tanya said about background and branding and sound quality and yeah, we yep. thought yeah. of it. We just didn't know how to pull it off when we were in two separate areas That's and he was on yeah. the road, That's you know. True too. But when, as Maya Angelou says, when you know better, you do better, right? <laughs> I like that. And for the people listening, they won't be able to see this, but if you notice, I wore your colors too. You love it. did. You did the gray and the orange. Yeah. Love yeah. <laughs> I love you, that. Adam? Oh, you're welcome. I didn't do it on purpose, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't admit uh, Tanya, that. Tanya, you didn't hear that, right? Nope. Okay. What? <laughs> uh, next question. That's the power of branding, see? You didn't even realize. <laughs> That's it. true. Green orange should be with us. Subliminally, with I, I was like, ooh, I need to wear this hat today. Exactly. And look at your orange glass. Yeah, orange Anyone listening orange. is so sad. They're like, what is he? What kind of glasses does he have? I need to see that right now. <laughs> hey, we this even is... have an orange comb. <laughs> yeah. I mean, wow. And a branded coffee cup with the logo on it. I mean, everything around here, my purse is orange. Everything around here is orange. I like that. I think that's important for the listener to take away. Branding has been a big thing to me. I've been quite intentional about it. I logoize lots of things, host conferences, gift all of the logoed things that are valuable coffee cups. And I think that that's a good takeaway. It reminds me of Grant Cardone, who love him or hate him. He is effective at what he does. And one of his books is called 10X Rule. And the point that I wanted to make that comes from that book and what he does and what Tanya and Michael are doing, it's like the 10X Rule of, okay, not only am I going to have the logo in my background, which was enough for anyone else, we're also going to wear the colors. We're also going to both be drinking from the colors. We're also going to be combing our hair on camera while we <laughs> podcast with our colors. It's just something to think about, I think, for everybody. Based yeah. on your why of launching a podcast in order to get credibility and authority in your space, in order to overcome objections with potential clients and say, you know, you're not ready to buy now or hire us today here check this podcast out based on your original whys the reason that you launched your podcast over the past four years have you been able to accomplish those things some of them or all of them Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. You know, it's funny because right before we got on this podcast today, I saw a lead come through for our sales team. And we asked, how did you hear about us? And then we say, you know, if there's any additional information you'd like to share, put it here. Well, that person not only heard about us from a podcast, from our podcast, but they also mentioned in great detail, here's what I'm missing. I'm missing my brand messaging. I need help with brand messaging from the development phase of your 3D formula. How specific is that, right? Mm -hmm. And this is somebody who listens so intently, they not only know what they're missing, but they know which phase of our formula it's in. <laughs> so that coaching and teaching aspect of things, I feel like that's really what we focus on a lot. Let us help you. Let us show you like what's wrong and how you can fix it. And that to me is like gold and it has worked like a charm. Absolutely. 
Awesome. I second that a hundred percent. We hear it all the time. People have been listening to you for a year and you know, now I'm ready. Now I know. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it's definitely been a tool that helps. And we get a lot of free inform we give a lot of free information away. People get a lot of good, valuable information from our guests and stuff. So which is yeah. another thing we learned yeah. from you is making sure that we are giving that listener the benefit of their time because they're taking their time to listen to you. So we try to get people with very strong personal brands and it can articulate how that's made them even more successful. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that when people come on the sales calls with our team, I cannot begin to tell you how many times they mention, oh, I must have seen 10 or 15, 20 of your videos before I jumped on this call. Mm -hmm. Now, for us, what that means is almost all of those are podcast episodes because we do a lot of multi-purpose. So when we do a live video each week, streaming out to all of our social platforms, we turn that into a podcast. And so that's the solo episodes where we're doing a lot of teaching. So they watch a lot of those videos and 90% of those videos are the podcast episodes. So they're really paying attention and it is bringing us results, no doubt about it. With that in mind, you're mentioning that you do some solo episodes, and it may have been just prior to recording. And so the listener probably hasn't heard this yet. You do an interview episode each week and a solo episode each week. What I'm curious about there is, is it challenging to put out that amount of content? Is it worth it? Is it something that you're thinking about changing? Or is it a cadence that's quite easy for you? And if it is easy, why? It's easy for us because we live and breathe it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and now sometimes you get really busy and it's like, I got to write the show notes for that particular one so we can do this seamlessly. But it's never difficult to come up with a topic because the challenges that come as a result of not being properly branded are numerous. And so we could go on and on about those for days. And I think people love to listen to episodes that touch on their own pain points. So if they're experiencing some pain with their marketing, with their results, 90% of the time, the problem is not their marketing, the problem is their brand. And so that becomes very easy to do that. Now, what is difficult a lot of times, I have to say, is finding guests that have a super strong personal brand mm -hmm. because we're very particular about that kind of thing. You know, we want to make sure that not only do they express their point of differentiation in their profession, but they also call out their ideal customers and they also tell their why. And it's also consistent everywhere. And they also have a look and a message that's compelling. So there are a lot of things we look for in a guest and it has become pretty tough sometimes to find really good examples. Mm -hmm. The one we do of our own, it's pretty easy because we just, like she said, she writes the show notes on it and then we ad lib it. It's not scripted, scripted by any means. And we just know what we're talking about when it comes to it. So it flows and we address things and we get to have fun with it, like different titles. Like a, we got one coming out that's like, you know, is your brand all hat and no cattle? And uh, we get different reactions from people when we talk about that, because some people know what we're talking about. And some people are like, what does that mean? Like, what, what does that metaphor stand for? And we're like, yeah, you got to watch the podcast to find out. Awesome. Maybe we need to go through the hat and cattle. I've been taking quite a bit of notes. And so there's a ton here. Send me the link to all hat, no cattle. So we can just put that episode okay. in our show notes. So if you're listening and you are, you're going to know that the bios for Tanya and Michael are in the show notes. You're also going to know that if you want to check out Be Bold Branding, the link is set there for you as well. But now that you've got the curiosity of hats and cattles, that specific logo also is going to be found down below. There's three things guys, that I really want to go into with you. I want to get just a little bit more of your suggestions for building a stronger brand, just some advice over that. The second thing that I want to do after our advertisement, we have a sponsor for this episode today, is to speak about some tools that you guys love. 
that have helped you in podcasting. The third thing that I know that I want to speak about with you and get your advice on when we jump back in is just your absolute top advice for somebody who's brand new in their journey. You've been doing this for four years. You've learned a lot. And I want you to pour into somebody who's brand new. So here in a second after the ad, we're going to talk about getting a stronger brand, tools for a podcast, and then definitely best podcasting advice. We'll be right back. Hey, my friend, as you know, this episode is sponsored by my company, growyourshow.com. We want you to be able to have the best tools at your disposal without costing you a whole arm and a leg. So right now you can get a free list of vetted equipment that like mics, mixers, webcams, sound treatment, editing software, everything that you need. I created the whole PDF with direct purchase links just to save you time and money to help it be more convenient for you. So this free PDF will help you skip all the guesswork. If it's on there, it's vetted and approved by yours truly. And if it's not on there, it's probably not worth the money. So go ahead and get yours at growyourshow.com forward slash PDF. Let's get back into the show. Thank you so much for sitting through that advertisement. I really appreciate it. We are with Tanya and Michael. And I mentioned to you a second ago that when we got back from the ad, we were going to be talking about three things, but I want to add a fourth thing to it. Because you know, as the ad was playing, I was thinking to myself, these guys are co-hosting for four years straight. And I think that that's something that could be of huge value because I have had a lot of people interviewed on our podcast and I've actually helped a few people launch podcasts. And some of those podcasts that we've launched, they were co-hosts, but they didn't even last a year. I mean, the podcast lasted a year, but the co-hosts didn't last a year. Additionally, a couple of our clients now that we didn't help them launch, but they launched like as a couple, for example, and they do like a daily episode and the husband no longer is part of the show. Another example is that me, myself, when I launched my first podcast, like four or five, over five years ago now, geez, I started with two co-hosts. And those two co-hosts didn't last 30 episodes. We've published over 600 on there. And one of them only lasted like eight episodes and the other one maybe lasts like 25 episodes. And I see these podcast co-host divorces all the time for many reasons. People want to launch a podcast because they, with somebody because it's going to help them feel better. Like it's just easier. There's less maybe pressure on them. But then they realize that it's just not working out. So, do you mind one of you, only one of you, sharing a tip for us on how to stay together as a podcast host for four years? You want me to answer it? Yep. Well, the secret to all of my success has just been listening to her. <laughs> so, when she tells me to show up, <laughs> I just show up. I'm just a pretty sports model. I, you know, got the face for podcasting that's not recorded. Uh, I don't know, really know the answer to that. I can tell you that Tanya and I have been the best of friends now for nine years. We have been partners for about seven of those years now. And then we were life partners ourselves. So we used to tell people, they say, are y'all dating? And we'll be like, well, we don't date anybody else. <laughs> uh, that was always our answer. We work very seamlessly together. Our businesses are entwined because when I hired her for the marketing for my real estate company, and then it did so well and continues to do so well, she asked me to be a partner in Brand Face and write the second book. So our companies really became sister companies, if you will, because they are just so joined at the hip. And we even have employees that are a part of both organizations. So her office is right beside my office. Our podcast studio is right between us. So we have really an ease and a flow, not only 
you know, personally and professionally, but then we also have set our world up to where it's easy to do. And then we're obviously very big calendar people because we stay so busy. We work with so many clients and other countries and other time zones, as well as here in the United States and every time zone. So because of all of that, we've had to streamline it. We're able to make our episodes at times where we know we are always going to be together. And that makes recording it easier. And then, of course, as we've grown, we have uh, production people in our team that uh, help with the production. So all we really need to do is shoot it and then let it go and let the girls work the magic. So I hope that helps answer the question. Um, Yeah, it does. Let me cut you off and go into tools. I want to rapid fire 20 seconds or less. What is one or two tools that you've found as staples for your podcast that make it easier? Okay, I would say... Well, first of all, we'd be remiss not to mention you, Adam, because Mm -hmm. we would not have the quality of podcasts we have today, nor the ranking that you helped us achieve. By the way, thank you very much, because that to us was proof that what we were bringing to the table was valuable. We just didn't know the best way to deliver that in this manner. The other thing is Podmatch. Alex Sanfilippo has become a good friend of ours, just like you have. And Alex is phenomenal. Podmatch helps match podcast hosts and podcast guests. And we've been matched up with some pretty awesome people. So two people, we don't always like to recommend tools when we can recommend amazing people. So there you go. I like that a lot. How about this last question? And we, it has to be short because I, we're jumping off. We have like one minute left. So 30 seconds or less. If I'm brand new, I'm listening, and I want to learn from these people that have been doing it for four years, what is the top advice? And both of you answer this quickly though, <laughs> but both of you answer this Michael, what is your absolute top advice for somebody who's going to start their podcast this week? Do it and do it consistently. Mm -hmm. How about you, Tanya? Yep. My advice is focus it. Don't try to take every topic on. Know who you're talking to and what you want to say to them. Mm, I love that. I really like that a lot. And what is the biggest mistake that in branding general and for podcasters, But for our business, what is the biggest mistake you guys have seen that you might be able to correct in one quick answer here for people branding? Podcasts are a lot like marketing, right? The number one mistake people make is marketing before their brand is built or doing their podcast before their brand is built. Because your brand has to answer five important questions. Who do you serve? How do you serve them? What qualifies you to serve them? How does it make their life better? And what makes you different than everybody else in your space? So answer those questions first. And that's the biggest mistake we see is they don't know who they're talking to. All right. So if you just heard the five things, who is it? How? The quality or what qualifies you? What makes you different? And what makes you be able to serve them? And you want to learn more about that? Go to B. Bold branding. I already put the link in the show notes. So all you got to do is scroll down. And if you're listening to this, you probably know that every other episode is a solo episode. And I don't want you to miss the solo episode. So just stick with this right now. Go to the very next episode and I'm going to pour into your podcast. See you there. You know, I really don't say this nearly enough. I don't mention this and I feel horrible because it's a great resource for you to be able to take your podcast to the next level. And it's simply a free resource that I don't need your email or anything. It's just a podcasting course that I created that is ended up putting in the very first six episodes of this podcast. So if you haven't checked it out, definitely going to want to just check out those first six episodes, see how they can help you improve your podcast, get in front of more people and have a better result where you're making more money through the podcast, etc. So much can happen after you listen through episodes one, two, three, four, five, and six. So if you haven't done it, go do it now. And by the way, if you're subscribed, you'll keep hearing more great content. So to those of you who are, I'll see you on the next episode.